title of this lab is Refraction at a Curved Surface and a Lens Maker's Formula. The purpose is to examine what happens when light is refracted in a curved surface and then to go one step further and see what happens when light is refracted in two curved surfaces, as in a lens. It's a good lab to do between the Snell's Law lab and before you get to the Thin Lens Equation lab. Uh, it, it kind of fills in the space between those two. We're going to be using pieces from the plastic prism kit. In this case, we're going to be using the acrylic semicircle, the convex lens shape, and the concave lens shape. The first part of the lab looks at what happens when light's refracted in a curved surface. In order to make this uh, not terribly stressful, we're going to have light pass through the flat surface where students should know that light won't be bent, it will continue on, um, at a zero degree angle, and then it will pass through the curved surface. Our light source will be a ray box. The ray box has a multifunction box. It has on one end a target that we'll be using in the uh, thin lens, in the two lens equation labs, and on the other end it has a sliding adjustment that allows you to choose from one to five rays or to choose color rays. On the other end there's a sliding adjustment that allows you to choose from one to five rays or if you turn it over you can look at colored rays. We're going to use one ray for this experiment. What I've done is to trace on a piece of paper the semicircular acrylic piece. You notice that I also have an optical axis, which I drew first, and a perpendicular line, which represents the flat surface. In order to guide the rays, I've drawn two perpendicular lines about a quarter to a third of the way from the central optical axis to the top of the piece. You don't want them, you don't want the incoming ray to hit much higher than that, and we'll show you why in a moment. Now I put the semicircular piece in place. And it does require some care in aligning it. And you can see that the light passes in through the flat side, is not bent or refracted until it gets to the curved side where it bends and passes through the optical axis somewhere over here. Now I move the ray to the other side and once again, there's no bending at the flat surface. All the bending is at the curved surface, and it passes through the optical axis at pretty close to the same spot. The object for students is to calculate, knowing the radius of curvature of the circle and the thickness of the peak. The objective for students is to calculate this position using Snell's law applied to this curved surface, and then to see how close their prediction is to the calculation. What students need to recognize is that the normal at this point is a radial line. So it's not that difficult to draw the, the geometry and then make the measurement. As an interesting extension to this, look at what happens when all five rays are used. And you can see that all five rays don't meet at the same point. In fact, keeping this incident ray perpendicular to the flat face of the acrylic piece, as I move upward towards the top of the circle, you can see that the ray passes closer and closer and closer to, to the curved surface. As I move this incoming ray up away from the optical axis, you can see that the point of crossing moves in. This is spherical aberration. 
and it's something that is useful for students. The second part of this lab is to look at the lens maker's formula. Uh, in this case, we've written the lens maker's formula for a lens that's in air. So this is the index of refraction of the material, and the one represents the index of refraction of air. And what we want to do is to use the radius of curvature of the plastic lens pieces, concave and convex, and calculate the focal length, which we'll then measure. In order to do this, we need to know what the radius of curvature is of these pieces. Here I've drawn a line representing the optical axis of the system and a perpendicular line representing the lens axis. I've carefully centered the lens piece on these two lines and sketched around them with a pencil. Now I can take a pair of dividers or a compass and I can determine what the radius of curvature is. I've determined that this is the uh, radius of curvature of the lens surface and now I can use a ruler to actually make the measurement and it appears to be 12 centimeters. You could have students check and measure both sides if you wish or they could just see that these are equiconvex sides and they must both be 12 centimeters. Using the lens maker's formula you can then calculate the focal length of this lens. Uh, this is assuming that you perform the Snell's Law Lab and that you know the index of refraction. If not, this is a good time to do it. To experimentally check the focal length of this lens shape, we choose five rays, place them so the central ray is going down the central optical axis and locate the point where they converge. We can then use a ruler to measure the focal length of the lens and see how close it came to the focal length predicted by the lens maker's formula. The same procedure can be used to find the focal length of the diverging lens. In this case, students will notice that the calculation gives them a negative number, and when they place the lens shape on the paper, they'll notice that the rays don't converge, but they diverge. In this case, to measure the focal length, the point from which the rays appear to diverge, or virtual focus, what they need to do is to locate two points on each outgoing ray, then use a ruler to trace these points back and see where they appear to come from. And that point is the virtual focal point of the diverging lens. That's the quantity that they will use to compare with the lens maker's formula.